Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks. A little bit of an odd intro there. Somehow the, uh, the beginning of this got twisted around and didn't work, so I had to uh, trim it out there. But anyways, getting into a match of Supreme Straits, and I'm really excited to show you this one because it, uh, well, it hits close to home here. I was the red team leader, as you can see, spawning in the southern section of Supreme Straits, the C lane position here, going for these three metal extractors. I went Cortex because I was on the red team, so, you know, that's just what you have to do. <laughs> going for the naval lab right off the bat. I was uh, super excited to play with the Navy. I, I, I was trying all day today to uh, get, a, get a good game with those T2 naval ships. And, uh, spoiler alert, but I did manage to get one. Stay tuned for that video. That's also going to be a really exciting one. But this one was really, really good. It was a very, very good match. And, uh, I, yeah, I just really wanted to showcase it for you guys. Uh, because I think it, I think it demonstrates just how, uh, how important learning always is. How, how important it is to continue to grow, continue to try and facilitate change. And I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be a really good match. Spawning in the northern section. Representing the blue team. I hope you can't hear that. Uh, might have to uh, might have to do a little bit of editing here. Anyways, <laughs> representing the blue team here, spawning as Armada, representing the blue. We have Toxic Fruit, uh, otherwise known as Fruit, and going to be getting a couple of those Resbots out. Spawning in the geothermal area, the geothermal spot, which is usually a very very powerful teching position. You can uh, you can basically get up to T2 extremely quickly with the assistance of that T2. Uh, or rather that T1 geothermal plant, which can produce a huge amount of energy for a very, very little metal investment. Uh, I, I I harp on this often, but that's because we always have new players joining and I want them to get the, uh, the best opportunities that they can. The geothermals are far and away the most efficient energy producer in the game, metal to energy wise. Uh, costing only... Let me pull it up here. Costing only 560 metal and 13,000 energy you can get 300 energy per second out of it. So that is a lot of energy, but especially on maps like this where there's tons of trees, you just can eat them up with these res bots and uh, you're gonna be in a great position here to start building tons and tons of really, really expensive stuff. Very, very good. Now up against me today is going to be Kbot my a-hole. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a pretty funny name there. Uh, Cortex player here. Going for the bot lab start over on the uh, on the the C lane position here, and this is a tricky one. Now going for the geothermal very very quickly. That's a great move. Very important again to go for that geothermal. You get a uh, you get you get the the benefits of that tremendous energy production for basically free on on, on a map like this where all of your early energy kind of just comes from sucking up all of the trees here. If I just show you really quickly. You can see down in the, uh, well, let me move it around so it's a little more visible. There we go, right sort of in the middle bottom of your screen. You can see the amount of energy total in all of the trees in this little area that I've selected here that could reasonably be considered K-Bot my a-holes. Uh, that's a solid 110,000 more or less uh, energy per second, or well, energy total that he can use to, uh, to fund various projects here. And so indeed using that to pay for a geothermal is gonna be well worth it. Kbot making the walk all the way out to this uh, to the water over here. I got a missile ship across. This is something I definitely recommend if you're playing Cortex here on the Southern Sea. I think Cortex works a little bit better on the Southern Sea, um, or rather, it works better when you're on the sea lane position, uh, which of course the northern lane has as well. I think Cortex works a little better because these missile ships can harass further onto the shore than uh, than the other ships can. So it's a really really good option for uh, for dealing a little bit of early damage and harassing the enemy down. I also like to get a submarine and park it up here in case anybody tries to go for some uh, cheeky constructor plays, try and build some stuff. You'll see me put a little uh, rally point up here to make sure that that doesn't happen. Oftentimes I've caught people sending uh, amphibious constructors out of vehicle labs or even commanders trying to build things over here and you can sometimes get a free kill off that. It's, it's just uh, one, of those, one of those things that you can really easily benefit from. Kbot my a-hole has moved forward here. I'm just gonna call him Kbot from now on. It's just uh, just a mouthful of a-hole. <laughs> uh, don't clip that. Anyways, <laughs> Kbot here, getting all of the metal extractors very quickly. He sent another constructor to build his geothermal. Really appreciating what he's going on over here. Meanwhile, the uh, Northern Sea is contested here. Viper Claw has gone for quite a bit of static defense, and we all know just how tough that static defense is to break, uh, especially on Navy. It's very cost ineffective to fight into static defense unless you can seriously overwhelm it. You can see in just a couple of hits, it's able to take down these uh, these dolphins here. 
I, I well, it took, took it down to 71%, so I'm going to go with four hits. Final answer, four hits. Uh, see, this is what I'm talking about. If you send a submarine over in this direction, you'll catch this uh, amphibious constructor here, and you can stop the sea expansion, and then you're free to eat all that metal up yourself. Often very, very powerful. This is another thing I was experimenting with, is sending missile ships around to try and harass this sea lane, and it's actually incredibly viable. You'll see here in a second that this missile ship can actually attack this metal extractor here, and this is a 4.3 metal extractor, so it is well worth shutting down. And uh, indeed, as soon as I get this within range, I have it start attacking that, uh, that metal extractor as, as soon as I can. I think this is a mistake I made here, is I didn't claim these metal extractor points over here. I definitely should have been on top of that. There you can see the uh, metal extractor going down here. That's 4.3 metal down the drain, and that's uh, that's pretty annoying, right? If you're playing as this player and your metal extractor is essentially harassed from a lane where you have no control over, yeah, that's that's pretty pretty infuriating. Managing even to get the uh, metal extractor back here. Those missile ships, man, they are not to be underestimated. At this point, Kbot has stepped out into the water. He's got a ship. Oh, he captured one of my ships. I was wondering where he got that ship from. <laughs> Excellently done. Yeah, using the capture tool to get that ship. I, I remember thinking that in the game. I was like, did he? where did he get a lab from? I don't remember him having a... I, I didn't see a naval lab. I feel like he would have seen it by now. No, he, he captured one of my ships, used it against me, and uh, killed my other missile ship with it. Excellently done there, using the powers of the commander to, uh, to, to get this under control and step out into the water. Very nicely done. Just goes to show you, man, a, a, a little bit of awareness about what your commander can do, and suddenly you have a really, really dangerous asset on your hands. My submarine gets within range here and starts firing on uh, whatever it can, trying to avoid this torpedo launcher. Submarines are very dangerous, especially to commanders. Commanders take 10 hits from a submarine, uh, and then they go down to their eternal grave. I guess that's not true. It's not their eternal grave, is it? So I was just trying to land hits on him. You can see this submarine firing away here. I'm curious how low I got him, because I remember firing at him for a good while, and I wondered what I actually got him to. Shuriken's here, trying their very best to help. Uh, not really being able to, though. 26%. Wow. It's pretty close. Ooh, look at those dodges. <laughs> Oh, he survives. 9% health. I think one more hit and he would have gone down. That could have been really dangerous. That could have been the end of the game right there if that submarine had landed that last hit. But he does a great job of uh, weaving the commander back and forth in order to stop that. Shuriken's also paralyzing everything over here. Excellently done by the air player in the back here, Snoopa. Oh, wait. Oh, no. It's not Snoopa. There's a player that goes by the name of Snoopa, but this is just Snoop. All right, Snoop. Well, anyways... Getting some shuriken out. As a Cortex player, you definitely want to get those shuriken out and use them wherever you can. They're very powerful. They can shut down a lot of early game aggression. They're they're well worth putting out on the field here. Middle of the map looks like it's being held. It's a bunch of artillery sieging, its, uh, sieging each other here, I should say. Gauntlet's built in the back line. Uh, and it looks like it's just one, actually. That's, uh, that's nice to see. Gauntlets can tend to get a lot of value out. The further forward, of course, the more value it can get, but also the riskier it is because it's, uh, it's likely to get shot down eventually. So I don't mind it back here. It's, uh, it's at the, the range of its effective, effective range. <laughs> it since kind of fell apart, didn't it? Anyways, uh, yeah, it, it, it kind of is reaching its limit here, but, uh, it, I think it's definitely done its job to push back whatever aggression is here. Reclaiming those vehicles would be really, really important at this point. A destroyer came out first, which is pretty surprising. Well, actually, I don't think it came out first, but it was one of the first ships that came out here. Usually what we see is a massive uh, collection of Riptides. Tons and tons of Riptides coming out. Uh, and then you can see that that's actually what I go for. A bunch of Riptides, Riptides and submarines, and then also a couple of uh, missile corvettes, which are very, very powerful. Submarine's pretty good too, but of course the destroyer has that depth charge launcher, so it is able to deal with them. Nice dodging there by that uh, destroyer here, and then the shurikens, man, so dangerous. Really, really nicely done with that shuriken air that is so difficult to deal with. I'm trying to get the herrings out to deal with that, but it's just, it's, it's impossible to deal with those unless you have enough air, air yeah, enough of those uh, anti-air missile ships. Very nicely done bringing those, those paralyzers out here. Also, the res subs here to pick everything back up. 
going to resurrect orcas, going to resurrect uh, missile ships, going to resurrect basically everything. I don't have, I don't even have a res ship out yet. Oh, I do have one, but it's way across the map here. Kbot has definitely clawed himself into a phenomenal position. Repairing the, uh, repairing the destroyer, also an excellent move because it does have that, uh, Veterancy, so it has a, a minus minus eight percent reload speed plus seventeen percent max health. It's just quite a bit stronger now, and uh, sending it out again is going to be a great option. Going for more destroyers, that's quite interesting. Kbot clearly more familiar with the uh, Cortex Cortex Navy than I am, and uh, more more power to you using the tools better than I did and getting those destroyers out, which are way more powerful than uh, than any of the other ships here. Watch this engagement. The missile herrings can tickle them from long range, longer range than they can fire at. But uh, as soon as they get within range, they just destroy everything here. I guess that's why they're called destroyers, huh? <laughs> Submarines do good damage against them too, but also they take good damage from them. So it's, uh, it's short-lived as those destroyers manage to sweep through my entire navy. And you can see with just a single engagement, also my res sub kind of derping around over here. But just a single engagement can turn the entire battle in a uh, completely different direction. I love the inclusion of these res subs so early, though. That's that's really, really nice, and I don't have anything to deal with that either. Shurikens, man. That's something That's something that I'm going to complain about. I definitely think if you're going to be in a backline position and you're going to go air, you definitely should be Cortex, because uh, those shurikens are so powerful in the seas. They completely shut me down over here. There was nothing I could do. My builder was completely paralyzed. My ships were completely paralyzed. It was like... Watching, my, watching the death of a man in, in, in slow motion. <laughs> now it's a big artillery war. We do have rattlesnakes out, the proper T2 artillery here, and we can see that they're starting to push back all the units here. There are some jammers hidden in the, uh, hidden in the veils of war here, and they're going to be able to uh, shut down a little bit of that aggression just because there's not going to be any radar signatures for those long-range artillery to fire at. Tried to self-destruct there. Not gonna work. At this point, panic mode is setting in and I'm just building as many Riptides as possible. I'm worried because I saw him resurrecting these ships and uh, if he was eating them, that's one thing, but he's just resurrecting them and that is a completely different thing. I did claim this island, which is really the only claim to uh, staying in this fight. If you're able to claim this island as well as maybe some of these metal extractors up here, you can stay in the fight just because of the fact that there's uh, Let's see, what's the what's the grand total on metal extractors here? Three, six, seven metal extractors versus three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve metal extractors. So I have way more metal extractors pumping out metal than he does. I wonder what the the metal per second income is like. Thirty-one metal up against uh, thirty-one metal. So the the big advantage here is this geothermal, which you can see is uh, being converted into a whole lot more energy. I probably should have been going for uh, solar pan or uh, wind turbines back here with the the commander building up a stronger energy source. <coughs> Whoa, excuse me. You can see these tidal generators. I like to send a constructor over here to just build tidal generators because oftentimes this area will go unscouted. And uh, if it if that is the case, then uh, yeah, you can end up you can end up getting away with building a whole bunch of tidal power over in this corner, and uh, that can that can really fuel you well into the late game. Meanwhile, on the northern section of the map, uh, yeah, it looks like Shirt Sturlitz, <laughs> not shirtless, Sturlitz has uh, won the naval game, but he does not know it yet. He's got tons of dolphins, tons of uh, tons of submarines. The uh, oh, what are those called? The Armada submarines, eels, lurking under the depths and getting some destroyers out now. Very nicely done. Eventually, going to be able to lay siege. Meanwhile. Looks like Viper Claw's in a bit of a pickle here. Going to have to try and figure out a way to get back into this game. T2 is definitely one way. If you're handed a T2 constructor, it's one way to claw back into here, but I don't see one being handed out from our backline. Yeah, it looks like backline basically is just going for as much eco as possible. No T2 to be seen. Something to be aware of if you're going for T2, especially in these mid lane positions, is that you definitely want to hand out T2 to all of your teammates. Make sure that they get upgraded. Uh, looks like I was handed a T2 from Leconitis, Le Lechonitis, Lechonitis, however you're supposed to say that. <laughs> Stealth tanks, that's worrisome. Stealth tanks are very difficult to deal with. 
You can see the difference those resurrection submarines make. Every time I send a ship out here, there's just two more waiting for me. And uh, especially with these resurrected submarines that are just all of my own. <laughs> all these turncoats. Getting back into the fight here is going to be really, really tough. I was doing a terrible job of streaming units out one by one. That's really not what I should have been doing. I should have been fortifying by these uh, static defense areas. That would have been a way better way to take this engagement here rather than just taking uh, aimless fire here from these submarines and, and eventually going down one by one. So this was excellent positioning here by KBOT. Taking, taking little fights all over the place wherever you can to whittle down the Navy. Definitely what you want to be doing here. Managed to eke a single submarine through to try and uh, try and shut down some of these res subs. Very important. I was this this was my one glimmering light of hope <laughs> in the darkness was the the fact that I might be able to uh, do something now that the resurrection submarines were stopped. My own eating up metal back here, but I actually just didn't even have enough build power. Running off of two build turrets, it was a critical lack of build power. You can see my APM is just stressed to the maximum, not not making good decisions whatsoever. And uh, yeah, uh, Kbot taking phenomenal advantage of that at every turn here. Gunboats actually work pretty well against destroyers because they uh, they pull their attention away and they can they can soften them up on the sides. It's a weird it's a weird engagement, but it uh, it does work a little bit. Man, looking at this now, I really wish I'd build more build power. I have so much metal that I actually have in my bank right now that's just not out on the seas, and it could have been uh, could have been turned into units that I could have used here. Man, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, this is a funny little submarine warfare here. Uh, derp. <laughs> circles. I'm on his tail, I'm on his tail! <laughs> Eventually they trade out. What a derpy little uh, mini game there. Eventually killed my res sub over here too, and that's uh, that's that's pretty much all it takes. Shut all that down. Built a heavy laser turret over here to shut down these metal extractors, which is quite nice. Let's me start pulling the metal out of that ground. I think what I should have done is use this transport to move the T2 over to this island, upgrade all these to T2 mexes, and then start working on a T2 economy here. I went for the uh, the better energy converter here, the, the advanced energy converter, so that all these ones would shut off, but uh, that actually drained a whole lot of my power. I think I probably should have gone for a fusion reactor. I'm being very critical of myself here because I think it might help uh, if, if anybody else is caught in this decision-making process here. Meanwhile, KBOT is applying pressure continually. We have a, oh, okay, we're doing destroyers and, and resurrection submarines. I think that's a perfect composition here, especially for Cortex. It seems like that works really phenomenally, especially with the auxiliary troops that uh, you just resurrect off the bottom of the sea. Seems like it works pretty well. Here he gets my build power, and this was it. This was the killing blow right here. My final build turret goes down. I start up another one immediately, but uh, yeah, things are not looking good at this point. All these destroyers are low on health, but it just makes me... It, he just puts the other ones in front and then pulls these back to go get rebuilt over here. And uh, that is exactly what you should be doing. Constantly constantly re rebuilding and reusing all the health from all your units. Super, super powerful stuff. Excellently done. Yeah, I have nothing but praise for this. Uh, finally, some uh, EMP support over here. I called out in chat, can I get some paralyzer support? I was so jealous of them. <laughs> I was jealous of Snoop sending those, uh, or jealous of uh, Kbot getting that that EMP support from Snoop. I was so excited to see a uh, EMP bomber sent over this way. <clears throat> Pardon me, I just had a massive Costco muffin, so I'm still uh, relishing the the deliciousness of that. You can see just a single EMP bomber not enough to uh, shut down both of these strike groups at the same time here. Go, little gunboat, go! <clears throat> my little, uh, my little, my weak little supporter. <clears throat> Build power just came back up online before it gets destroyed again. <laughs> and that's it. Kbot has now snowballed into an army or a navy, I should say, that is much, much more powerful than mine and forces me out of the water. 
So this is, uh, this is a, a great example of how to do the Navy. Doing an excellent job of using all the resources at hand, using the res subs to get units back up and running and folded into your Navy, using the uh, destroyers, and then uh, pulling them back when their health gets real low and rebuilding them. Just excellently done here. Very, very nice and done. Scaling the economy in the back too, despite not getting a T2. Uh, if, if a T2 had actually been given out to Kbot, I think he would have... He, he would probably have been on T2 Navy by this point and probably would have been well, well into a, a, a much more powerful position here. Trying to go for an agitator. I was thinking maybe if I build an agitator here, it'll be able to uh, attack onto land and it could cause some grief. And actually, I was planning on attacking these uh, energy converters over here and I think it might have actually worked. Torpedo bomber's out, but much too late. I've already lost the naval battle, so these are essentially worthless. There's, there's not really a whole lot of value they can get. I mean, shutting down a destroyer or two is always nice, but... Uh, what good does it do when I can't even really get back into the naval theater? Setting down the res subs would be nice because it does mean that they're not going to be able to uh, eat up all this metal so quickly. So I guess that's one nice thing, but then the fighters come in and uh, sweep away most of that. Yeah, they were just on top of it. Their air player was, was way on top of it here. Snoop knew what he was doing. Actually went into an armada transition here. Really nicely done. Transitioning from Cortex for those early shurikens into armada for those late game uh, nuclear bombers or fighters or whatever it may be. Very, very powerful stuff. I was going to say, I'm surprised that didn't kill both of those. They, they looked like they were right next to each other. <laughs> Uh, See, so yeah, I forgot to micro this. This is another terrible mistake here. I just completely forgot to micro this uh, this agitator here. And then you can see it firing away, doing basically nothing. Floating heavy laser turret, also not really ideal. Those are those are basically meant to stop hovercraft. <clears throat> Against the Navy, there is not a lot that it's going to do here. It takes down a single uh, a single reptide, which is not not at all worth the uh, the horrendous cost of building one of those things. <laughs> Still resurrecting here. I think at this point it's probably safe to just reclaim, but I wonder if he was probably just focused on uh, ecoing up in the back line here. You can see him going for a uh, going for a hovercraft lab here. I do like that. Maybe going to start trying to send some hovercraft across. Meanwhile, a little bit of a marauder push has been worked on in the back line. It's good to see that the back line was up to something. Meanwhile, a marauder push, a counter marauder push, uh, has been sent, and there's no way for us to deal with this, so unfortunately... Um, went for the eco when really we needed units, and now you can see the marauders running into the back line here. They're gonna run into a whole bunch of marauders, so uh, I don't know if this is... I don't know if you would consider this a valuable push, although they could get that advanced geothermal right there. Well, the uh, blue player is not paying attention. Nope, the uh, marauders aren't either, though. Alright, and all the marauders will be cleaned up, a lickety split. Meanwhile, a bunch of marauders have already gotten into the back lines here. Taking down all the build power here of the pink player. There are EMP bombers, but uh, yeah, those those will get shot down eventually, as well as oh, very nicely done. Snoop moves in the fighters and does take out the uh, EMP bombers, essentially guaranteeing these marauders a clean sweep of the base here. Taking down the T2 air pad and moving on towards Katsuyo's base. What, what unfortunate timing. Ooh, looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like the Geo did go down because that entire place is destroyed, but, uh, Katsuyo was so focused over there, he forgot to realize that his, his teammate was actually being obliterated by Marauders in the back line here. Tried to send in some Shurik, and that, uh, that didn't work very well. <laughs> Not really very well at all. And there goes the build power, meaning that the T3 will never come up. The advanced geos go down, or the advanced uh, fusions go down, rather. And that is both of our backline players taken out by a single Marauder run by. Very nicely done by their blue player, Fruit, here. And uh, our team is in shambles. At this point, trying to cobble together whatever I can. Going for Shuriken, going for Fighters, since our uh, our air player has been eliminated. This is, uh, this is not looking good, that's for sure. I wonder what push he's going to go for. Okay, sent some uh, hovercraft across the map. That's not bad. Also lining the coast here. Not a bad idea either. Going to allow these ships to attack anything that strays too closely here. But taking a little bit of fire from these rattlesnakes. It's uh, it's not ideal, but it's also like, what can you do, right? There's there's only, uh, only so much here. Big push here by Keith Carlson, but there's EMP bombers out. And with no air player, yeah, there's, there's not a whole lot we can do. It was excellently done. They took out both our air player and our uh, eco player in the back, our big T3 heavy hitter. 
it's funny. Apparently, fruit fruit is saying he focused too hard and lost his base. It's uh, it was basically a perfect base trade. Fruit ran the Marauders around and took out uh, three players, but lost his base. Whereas uh, Katsuyo took his Marauders around, took out two bases, and lost his base. So uh, I guess it wasn't a perfect base trade. It was a it was a uh, less than ideal base trade. <laughs> Oh, some mines on the coast here are actually working perfectly. Shut down those uh, hovercraft. That's quite, that's quite funny. Kbot, a little uncertain of what he should go for. Um, did we have? No, we didn't have the ex, the uh, extra T2 units out and available yet. Oh, gunships are out now. Oh, I should probably comment on what I think cuts you or uh, what I think Kbot should go for. I, I like the uh, amphibious lab here. When you win the beachhead position, that's much better because you can spread out a massive wave of units, just send them all across like this. Um, and oftentimes the shock of that is enough to disrupt the front line and allow your uh, your front line to push in here. But in this case, the front line has already collapsed. So what I think what I'd like to see more is actually just transitioning out of the sea and going into a lab back here, or I mean, even you could build it over here and just send units around this uh, around this corner and out to the front line. And what that's going to give you is basically more reinforcement on the front line since you basically don't have to worry about the sea. Now, I wasn't eliminated yet, so he was probably wary of that, knowing that I was I was probably able to get back into the ocean, but it was definitely the last thing that was on my mind. It's very terrifying to try and get back into the ocean as a, uh, as a commander that's on this shoreline because you know that there's probably a huge navy waiting for you somewhere in the, somewhere in the Merc. Going for that T2 economy here, and I don't hate it whatsoever. I think uh, stepping into the T2 naval economy is definitely the right move here. Um, but getting a T2 land bot would also be a good idea. Sorry, let me clear the map there for you. I realized I just drew all over it and then uh, didn't clear it. <laughs> Missile ships over here are so annoying. They rain down siege from so far away. They're just, they're such a pain in the neck. Really, really difficult to deal with. Keith Carlson is moving the commander out here, but there are submarines to deal with uh, any commanders lurking in the in the depths. So I think that commander is going to be really, really, really risked uh, if it steps too far forward here. You can see I went for some uh, hovercraft labs here. Trying to find a way to contribute to the team. I figured I have economy to start spamming out tiny units. I have an advanced fusion reactor up now. Before I went down, I basically managed to uh, reclaim a whole bunch of stuff from the sea, and because the metal extractors along the coast weren't shut down very quickly, basically none of it was shut down very quickly, I was able to build up enough metal to transition into a, uh, a better economy, and that's something that you want to be aware of if you're uh, if you're going to be playing on the, the sea lane here. I like that we're resurrecting everything back here for Doshi Bag. I, I've been informed that this is pronounced Doshi Bag, not, uh, not Doshi Bag. <laughs> Keith Carlson moving the commander forward does go down. Takes out a couple of those submarines, but I don't really think that was a trade that was worthwhile. This base is uh, in a risky position here. If these if these ships started attacking this advanced fusion reactor, it would certainly be in a uh, terrible position. These catapults are doing so much work on the front lines. You can see they're just la laying siege to any units that dare to run forwards. Push and win. Push and win. That's the key, isn't it? <laughs> See, they've got a spam of units coming out here. Very difficult to deal with. Some bombers. I was glad I saw those. I was surprised these weren't with a uh, fighter screen, but I guess they were the last remnant bombers of fruit here. And uh, luckily, I'd started up a air wall screen. I realized we were weak in the air. That's uh, something that I was pretty proud of. Was just realizing that uh, you know, trying to trying to pay attention to where the team is weak. It's always always really important trying to figure out where your uh, where your team needs support in this case it was the air force always be always be uh, hesitant or wary of that where where can you actually contribute the most when you've been knocked down sometimes the best thing for you to do is just simply to uh simply to st take a step back and build a massive economy in the back line just fall behind your other players let, let them step up to the front lines and you just fall back and eco your heart out and uh, eventually you're going to get somewhere real nice See, I was pouring all my resources into energy, trying to trying to desperately claw myself into an economy that could compete over here. I probably could have gone T2, and I didn't realize it because I didn't have any uh, scouting information over here. But uh, yeah, I, I, I figured there would have been a tremendous navy waiting for me, but actually there wasn't at all, which is a good move by uh, a good move by Kbot. I think going into a huge navy is actually a mistake. 
typically you want like support ships like messengers or you know things like that that can uh, that can do do some sort of damage from afar but the more the more metal you spend on navy the more uh the the less you're spending on anything that can actually help the ground right so unless you're going for like a capital ship maybe it's the other the other example so many shurikens brought out here just to paralyze all the uh, all the hovercraft that i was sending just to the stream of hovercraft it's quite funny Okay, bot did manage to come up on this uh, on land here and capture all this. It's very nice of that. Looks like he blew apart most of it, but uh, captured some of it. Well, I don't know what happened here. Looks like a civil war went down. <laughs> Nicely done, though. Take take claim of that island. That was definitely giving me a huge metal influx for the longest time. I was fortunate that my my economy had grown before I uh, before I needed it, but yeah, that was certainly a uh, that was certainly a thorn in his side, I'm sure, not knowing what was going down on this island over here. This is still a nice little bit of energy production. You can see 1,500 energy coming in from those uh, those tidal generators all over the place, but now the T3 has hit the front lines. Things are getting really desperate for our team. I started up a uh, uh, tick spam, because, well, people were asking for it, but it took me too long, and I don't think these even hit the field before uh, Zop Maximus base gets popped here. Oh, I'm so somber because I hate losing, but I gotta show you guys this because it was just such a good match. It was so clean, it was so crisp, an excellent air player, excellent sea players on both sides here. When you've lost both the seas, it's a very depressing side. I'm not sure why these aren't moving. These should definitely keep moving forward here. These could get a lot of damage out if we just move these hovercraft across the map. Um, but anyway, once you've lost both the seas, you're in a really tough position because uh, you know that means that essentially there's, uh, there's no more... There, there, there's no, there's no more protection. There's no early warning against, uh, for instance, marauders or anything like that. You're just, you're at, you're at the whims of the enemy, and you have to fort, you have to fort and pork as much as you can. Build power went down, which was uh, pretty much the death of me here. And you can see that the bombers are looping back around for round two, dropping on my advanced fusion reactor. There goes my fusions. My base goes up, and uh, that is, that is me out of the game. I mean, not entirely. My uh, commander is still there, but I decided to call it at that point because I think we were basically dead. Tremors even accompanying everything on the front line. Tremors are just the weaker version of a catapult, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the. Uh, I don't know what those are included for. Probably would have been better to just go for a bunch of tigers, in my opinion. But either way, stepping forward here. I like the prude. Uh, prude is definitely a good option if you haven't won the sea lane over here. Going for a brood lets you. Uh, yeah, it lets you, lets you maintain this uh, geothermal without the risk of it exploding right in your face. Our backline never truly recovered here. I didn't realize it, but uh, this player this player was out. Who was it? Katsuyo was out of uh, constructors when he died, so I, I handed him one very late into the game. Uh, definitely could have could have done better to uh, hand him a command or uh, hand him a constructor a whole lot sooner here. Didn't realize that. Guess that's on me. But be sure to call that out. Make, make a little bit of noise about that because uh, it's important that you get back into the game here. Nicely done sharing advanced fusion reactors as well as some energy converters to get the economy here for fruit back up and running. Even though I don't think it's entirely necessary. Advanced fusion reactor goes up there for Keith Carlson. And the game is slowly collapsing. Yushi bags commander. Was that? Oh no, that was, uh, that was just a hidden commander over here. Looks like they have a pinpointer, because those knew exactly where he was located. And I don't think this game goes on for very much longer. Actually, I think this replay might be bugged. <laughs> oh, that's weird. I, uh, I think this replay might be bugged, because I think this replay is supposed to end in 33 minutes. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, in case it's not obvious, the uh, blue team managed to claim victory here. This is very odd. I'm not. I'm not sure what happened uh, to the to the end of this game here. But anyways, yeah, the blue team managed to claim victory here, wiping us from the face of the earth. Very nicely done by them, snatching victory and doing a great job of it. Claiming both seas is such a tremendous advantage. It really, really does help quite a lot. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today. I know this is a bit of an unconventional ending. I hope you can forgive me here. Oh, not changes. I wanted to show you guys the uh, statistics here. Sorry, the uh, the graphs didn't pop up. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really unsure of what happens, but you know what? It's, uh, 
it's an alpha game or a beta game, whatever you call it. It's uh, it's prone to happen here and there. Anyways, thanks a ton for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out, everybody.